Hello everyone, today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm going back to my roots as a gaming YouTuber and we're going to be playing a game. But this is a wildlife and nature based game, which is why I want to show it to you today. We're going to be playing the digital release version of Wingspan. Now Wingspan is a board game and actually if you look over my head, there is a physical copy of the game on my shelf just over there. It's a fantastic game. I love the, the physical board game. And I think earlier this week or just the end of last week, this was released on Steam as a digital version they've done a fantastic job in converting the board game to our computers and I wanted to show the show you the game and why I love it so much so first of all let's just listen to this music so good it's relaxing it's beautiful it's the kind of thing that I would love to put on the background of my videos it's brilliant and also you've got the ambient birds in the background as well because this game wingspan you can see by the the beautiful picture of the bird flying around on the screen um, it is a game about birds. So what I want to do is first of all is just turn off the music and the ambient uh, settings just for a moment. I'll turn off the music and the ambient birds because I want to play something to you in just a second. Um, so we're going to start and we're going to play a game and uh, let's do a custom game. We're going to do a three play game against the AI. So there's um, the main reason why I want to play this game, why I want to show you today, is to show how its theme of birds really comes through in the game mechanics, but also in its kind of educational aspect. Uh, you can actually learn a bit about these birds as you play the game. Um, and one thing I really love about games is when they embrace a theme, and that is something this game does brilliantly. Um, so we'll just uh, start off the game here. So. First of all, we are greeted with five different birds and uh, we have at the bottom of the screen here, we have five items of food. And so in game terms, we get to choose five of these items um, and we have to leave five behind. So we can choose all five birds, but we have no food. We can have all five food, but have no birds or a mixture of the two. So why, why are we doing this? How do we win the game? The game is won by the most number of points at the end of the game. It's traditional kind of board game scoring. Um, but there are, there are a number of ways to score points. But before we get onto that, I just want to quickly take you through the, the cards that these birds are on and just, just explain to you why they're so good um, as an educational tool as well as a game playing tool. So in this game, we have three different habitats. So each habitat has a particular action you can do in each one. Um, you can go to the, the woodlands. You can't really see too much just yet, but you can go to the woodland areas and you can gain food at the woodlands. You can go to the grassland area and you lay eggs at the grassland area. Or you go to the wetland area and you can get more birds. That, that's the gameplay mechanics. But each bird has a particular territory where it can be played. So, for example, uh, this yellow-bellied sapsucker can only be played in the woodland area. It has a little wood symbol there. The king rail only goes in the wetland area. So these obviously relate to the kind of habitats that you would find these birds in real life. The king rail here is clearly a wading bird, so you find it in the wetland areas, that sort of thing. Um, so that's one thing that we, we you learn about. Also, the type of food that the bird eats. So as I said, you can choose these items of food. We have berries, we have fish, we have invertebrates, we have uh, small rodents, and we have seeds. So, um, for example, the uh, the hawk here uh, will eat uh, the, the mice symbol. So because it's a predator, generally it will eat uh, little small rodents and mammals. Um, so that's what it does. The, the great egret, um, which I actually saw one of these, um, uh, in a previous video when I went to the RSB, uh, uh, RSBB uh, Nature Reserve at Strumpshaw Fen, there's a video on that one where I did actually film what one of these um, birds are there, which is actually this is one of the few birds that I will actually see because one of the downsides about this game, I was going to mention this later, but uh, since we've got this here, one of the downsides is most of these birds are uh, American birds, so you'll only find them in America, so mostly North America, sometimes South America. Occasionally you get some which are found all over the world. Um, and the great egret is, is a migrant bird to this country, the UK where I'm from. Um, so that is one of the few birds in this game that I might actually see. Um, but that, the, the great egret is um, kind of, well mainly eat fish, because again it's a wading bird, you can see it in the wetlands, but it will also eat things like amphibians and uh, small rodents as well, which is kind of uh, um, shown on the on the card. Um, the uh, yellow-bellied sapsucker will eat berries, 
and invertebrates. So it kind of gives an idea of the kind of foods that these birds will eat. It also gives you the wingspan as well uh, at the bottom here. So you can see that the largest bird here is the, the, the Ferengus hawk um, with 140 centimetre wingspan. And then the great, great eucard is also a big one, 130. And then we have the uh, slightly smaller birds, the, uh, the yellow-billed cuckoo and the yellow-bellied sapsucker, both just over 40 centimetres. So again, it gives you that kind of idea. Uh, we also have this little symbols here. Now these are the nests. Uh, we have a cavity nest, so the, uh, the sapsucker will make its nest in cavities within trees, um, and that's reflected in the nest type. And these, all these other birds are platform nests, so they, they build platforms. Um, I don't know these birds that well, so I can't say how accurate that is, but um, they'll have some kind of platform. Uh, whether it would be on top of a tree or in a raft on a, on a lake or something, anything like that, it kind of gives you an idea. There are also, um, there are like, I think, ground nesting birds and bowl birds. There's, there's a few different kind of nest types um, reflected in this game. Um, so that's pretty much all we have for the cards. Uh, the only other thing here, a gameplay mechanic rather than an educational tool, this feather icon here with a number next to it, that's basically how many points the card is worth. So the Great Egret is worth a lot of points. The seven is quite a highly scoring uh, card. Um, uh, so the other ones are a little bit less. Uh, so um, there is there is a little bit more educational, but I'll get into that when we start playing because uh, we'll I'll actually demonstrate something to you. Uh, but we'll get onto that in a moment. So how do we how do we earn points? So you get the points for playing the bird. Um, there are four rounds, and each round has a certain number of turns in. So at the end of a round, there's there's end of round scoring. Um, so up here we have the four different rounds and the four different ways of scoring. So we have um, the first round you get points for the total number of eggs you have laid on platform birds, uh, platform nests. Second round it's the total number of birds in the grassland area. The third round is just total number of birds um, and the final round is the, um, the birds that have bowl nests. If you have a, an egg laid in that nest they all score one point each. Something. Uh, so you want to, um, when deciding what to keep to, for the game ahead, you might want to look ahead to some of these different scoring rounds and see uh, what kind of things we can do. So for example, the first round is uh, platform nests. So all these birds, here, these four birds, all have platform nests, so any of them could potentially earn us points. Um, so at the bottom of the cards here, one thing I didn't mention, is this little egg symbols. So the more egg symbols you've got, the more eggs you can potentially lay on the birds. So while the, uh, the, the famous hawk here um, has a platform nest, so you could lay eggs on it and gain points. It only has the possibility of laying two eggs on it, so it's only, you're only going to get um, two eggs on that card, whereas the king whale, for example, has uh, six eggs. That's, that's obviously a prolific egg layer, so you could potentially get quite a lot of points on that card. So that's something to take into account as well. And now the other thing before we choose is do we just go over to here with the other way of um, scoring the points is the bonus card. You get to choose one of these and these are scored at the end of the game. So we can earn points for birds that can only live in the forest area. We need three or four birds and we'll get four points. Or if we have five or more birds, we'll get eight points. Um, that's quite a high scoring card. Or we can go for the historian card. So birds named after a person, you get two points for every bird. Uh, there. So do we have anything named after a person here? I don't think we do. Um, but we do have cards that can only be played in the forest area. So both the yellow-bellied sapsucker and the yellow-billed cuckoo will earn us points at the end of the game or count towards it. So we need at least three words to get points for that one. So we can start off with two straight away. So you've got to take all these things into account when choosing which to play. So I normally choose maybe two or three birds and then the rest will go for some food. Because to play birds you're going to need to food um, the, the, the food that's on the card is basically how much food you need to pay to be able to play that. So we'll get onto that in just a moment. So let's just choose some birds. Um, we're going to go with, uh, let's go with, what are we going to do? Uh, I quite like to go for the Great Egret because it's a lot of uh, points. On the other hand, actually, you know what? I'm not going to go for that one. I'm going to go for the, the Hawk. A little bit easier to play because it's only two food, <coughs> excuse me, while well, the Great Egret is three food, so um, you've got to take that into account as well. We'll go with the uh, the yellow bellied sapsucker because um, that will count towards our forest, do we think, if we go for that, which I think we probably will 
we'll go for the forester. So we want birds in the forest. So we'll go for the yellow bird cuckoo. So I'm just going for those three, I think. Um, so we can need berries, invertebrates, uh, rodents, and more invertebrates. So we'll definitely take the invertebrate because we're going to need that for the two birds. Um, and we'll take, I guess we'll take a, um, yes, we'll take a berry and that will at least allow us to play the, uh, the, the sapsucker straight away. So we'll take that, we've got all five things, we've chosen our card, now we're into the game. Okay, so this could be a bit of a lengthy video, so hopefully you'll stick with it, you'll find this interesting. Um, and you can see how, how good this, uh, this game certainly is. So I will turn the music and stuff back on in just a moment, but I just want to play a bird first. So that is the first thing I'm going to do on my turn. I'm going to go to the woodlands, and I already have the food for it, so I'm going to play my yellow-bellied sapsucker. So in the woodlands here, we have these uh, one, two, three, four. We've got these five spaces um, where you can play up to five birds in the in the area. Uh, so that you start off with the to let work left to right. So the um, first area is where we're going to be playing the yellow-bellied sapsucker. So we'll play that. So to play that, we need to pay our food, the berry and the invertebrate, which we picked up. So we're going to play that. Yellow-bellied sapsucker. Sapsuckers drill rows of holes in trees, then lap up the sap and the insects it attracts. So uh, that's um, the other action bit I wanted to say. That every time you play a bird, it tells you about that bird. It's just a little sentence, but it just gives you just that little extra. That they, it's something that didn't have to be done. In the physical copy of the game, uh, they have the text written on the cards themselves, so you can read it as you as you play. Um, but this one, every time you play it, it will uh, will play. So it's, it's such a fantastic feature. Um, and that was my first turn. Okay, so um, you know, my opponents will play. Now it comes back to me. And so now if I want to be able to play uh, these other birds, I'm going to need to get more food. Um, but I also want to take into account that I need to play these birds because they have um, the platform nests, which is what I need to, to lay eggs on in this round to score the points. And I have to make sure I do that. So we're going to try and get some food. Um, so I'm going to activate this one. So. The more birds you play in an area, the better it is for you because you activate the first empty space from left to right. So in this case, it's now going to be the second space because we've played one bird. If we were to activate the grasslands area, lay eggs, we would only activate this, uh, the far left one because that's the empty one. And as they get over to the right, uh, you get more and more for, for the thing. So for example, uh, this one we, we can earn one food we can exchange a card for a second food. If I was to play another bird in this space and cover this one up, so we then activate the third space along, we would just get two food each time. So it gets better as you get along. Um, but I'm going to take the food. Now I want one bit of food. So in the bird feeder, we have three invertebrates. So I can only choose invertebrate. But one of the things you can do is if um, all dice, so the same item of food, or there's just one dice left, uh, you can reroll everything to get something different. So I'm trying to think about what it is I want to play. I think I want to play my hawk first. It seems to be the, the most useful one because not only is it a platform um, nest, which earns points in this round, it's also a grassland species, which will earn us points in the second round. So I'm actually going to reroll everything and hopefully get some mice on, which I do. So I can take that mouse and uh, that's what we'll take. Now, Every time you activate the area, any birds that you've played will get activated as well. So, and they all have these little skills. So when activated, gain one uh, invertebrate from the supply. So I will automatically gain an invertebrate um, because I have that bird played. So every time I gain food, I will also gain an extra invertebrate as well. So that, that kind of is, this, this is what you kind of call, um, I guess it would be like an engine builder. So as you play along, you're building up this engine of things that will work for you. So you activate these areas, you're getting all these extra benefits from it um, and things kind of build up as the game goes along. So I still don't have enough food to play either of my birds and I don't have the right birds out to get points for my platform thing. So I really need to work on that. The downside is that I cannot get another mouse from bird feeder, even if I used to gain more food. So we may actually need to look towards getting our yellow-billed cuckoo played. Um, we've got off to a bit of a tricky start, actually, but I will try and get some more food. We've got one invertebrate. We do need another one. So I will take uh, this one. So these dice here, oh, you know what I could do? Yes, okay, new plan. 
I'm going to take a berry because the yellow bird cuckoo needs two invertebrates and you see the, the little coloured circle that means it will take anything there's probably uh, maybe a slightly uh, omnivorous uh, bird so it will will eat pretty much anything so I could use one miscellaneous bit of food and two invertebrates so if I take one berry um, next time it depends on what our opponents do. All these dice are the same, so we could potentially re-roll them. Um, I'm also giving that option to my opponent, so that might not be the best idea, actually. Hmm. It might be safer just to take an invertebrate. Yeah, I think, actually, change of plan. Forget what I just said, because, because I can't re-roll on my turn. So we can take an invertebrate, and we'll, we'll just see what happens. Um, and I gain another one as well. So we've got loads of invertebrates, so we're doing good on them. Technically, I could play that with three invertebrates, so that would actually work, I think. Maybe not. Oh, no, I know what I need to do. I need eggs as well. So um, that's the other thing. So each time you play a bird, it gets slightly more expensive to play. It gets more difficult. So on the first base, it basically all you're doing is you're paying the food cost. Um, but if you play the second space, you see at the top here is this little egg symbol. I have to pay one egg as well as the food cost. And on the uh, fourth bird, you have to pay two eggs. So they do get more expensive as they go along. Now, I haven't laid any eggs yet, so I can't play a second bird in this area. So I can't actually play my cuckoo just yet. Um, I could I could do a little bit more of an expensive route and I could play my hawk. Because you can pay two items of any food and exchange it for another one. So I could pay two invertebrate and count it as a, a mouse <laughs> to, to be able to play the hawk. It's a bit of a game mechanic, but that, will, but that would work. So it's a more expensive way to do it, but it is an option. And I think, I kind of, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to play my hawk. So as you can see here, I can pay two invertebrates, which counts as one mouse. And I've got the one mouse already, so we're going to do that. Ferruginous hawk. These rust-colored birds sometimes hunt in groups in prairie dog towns. Ferruginous. I was pronounced that wrong earlier. You see, these American birds. I know nothing about American birds, unfortunately. Not that I know much about UK birds either, but I'm I'm trying to learn. Um, okay, so what this means now is I have a platform bird out, and I have the ability now in this turn I can lay some eggs, which then means on my next turn or I can then start working towards being able to play by a cuckoo. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to lay eggs. So I can lay two eggs. If I exchange the food item, I can lay a third egg, but I kind of want that food so I can work towards the, the cuckoo. So I'm just going to lay two eggs. Now obviously I need, I get points for eggs in platform nests. This bird has a platform nest, so I'm going to stick them both on that bird. Okay, yes, yeah, so one thing I didn't do, and this is why I, was, why I turned the music off and the ambient birds off, is because when you click on a bird, you hear that call, and that works for, for all of them. So you can actually learn your bird calls as you play the game as well, which is actually fantastic. It's not much use for me because most of these birds I'll never see unless I go to America, which I'm not planning on doing just yet. Um, but um, the physical game, I keep pointing over here, but the physical game does have expansions. Um, one of the expansions is a European bird expansion, and I'm guessing if this game sells well on Steam, which I'm pretty sure it will do, um, then they'll probably add them as DLCs later on. Um, the the board game itself won basically every award you can imagine. If if, if there's an award for a board game, Wingspan won it probably. Um, it was uh, pretty much in everybody's top ten games of the year last year, I think it was. Um, so it, it, it was a highly acclaimed game and the digital version is, is a really good conversion to, to digital media. So um, anybody who, who likes the, the game is probably going to want it. I certainly did. Uh, but yes, so anyway, we're done there. <clears throat> so uh, if we just go to have a look at our skill here. So, we're active, so we lay eggs, so we're activating our hawk. Um, so we roll all the dice that are not on the bird feeder and if any are a mouse, uh, mice we gain one and we cash it on the card which basically earns us a point. So currently there are four dice outside the bird feeder, we can roll them all. Oh look at this, we got, oh, we roll three but we do only get one unfortunately. But it gives us a point, um, which is what we want to win the game. 
Okay, so we're getting through. So, so the game does speed up as you go along, and obviously I'm explaining things as I'm doing, so it's going to take a little while. So this might be a little bit of a lengthy video, but we'll try and get through it uh, without hopefully keep you interested. Um, okay, so the next step I want to work towards getting my cuckoo, so I'm actually going to try and get some more food. Um, so let's do that. I can only pick up one at this point, but I'm going to have to do it. Um, so I'll go for one of the invertebrates, because we need two of them. Oh, I didn't need to do that. Can I just, let me just... I'll change my mind. Not that it really matters, but I'm going to go for something different. I'm going to go for a seed. Because now I've activated this area, we actually gain an invertebrate for supply anyway. So I get my two and I've got my random bit of food. So I can play this on my next turn. Which is what I was going to do straight away. So uh, we'll play it to what, while I just think of it. Let's get that music back on just a little bit. And get some ambient birds. That's better. I should have done that ages ago. Anyway, let's carry on. So we're going to pay the food, two invertebrates and a seed. And we need to spend the egg. So we need to go back to our hawk, spend an egg. Yellow billed cuckoo. Yellow billed cuckoos lay their eggs in other birds' nests when food is abundant. Or when food is abundant. Okay, that's interesting. So because this actually has um, a nest icon and you can lay eggs in that nest, Presumably, when, which is because when food is abundant, it lays eggs in other nests. So perhaps when food isn't abundant, it actually creates its own nests. That's, uh, it gives you kind of a jumping point. I could actually then go look it up and actually find out a bit more about it, whether that's true. I'm guessing that is true based on the way that they've set this bird up. Um, okay, so we have this. So I think what we need to do now is we need more, more eggs. So now we've got our second platform um, bird out. I'm going to lay two eggs. We'll lay that one on the hawk which is now filled up can't lay any more eggs on that but i can now lay one on our cuckoo uh, which gives us the more points so again i have activated um, the grassland bird our hawk so i can roll these dice and i get another one that's pretty good mice are actually quite rare because there's only one on the on the dice so we come to the end of the round end round scoring i had the most eggs in platform birds um, so i get the maximum points for the round which is four our red player had one, um, so they get one point. Our yellow player didn't have any eggs on platform there, so they don't get any points at all. So now we move on to round two. So this time we need birds in the grassland area, and we only get seven turns, whereas last turn we had eight turns. So we get through this a little bit quicker. Um, so we actually need to get more birds, because I can't play any more birds, and I need grassland birds. Um, so we're going to draw a card. So what do we want to do? I can take one of these three, or I can take a random one from the face down deck, but I don't know what I'm going to get if I do that. So ideally I want a grassland bird. So we could go for the fish crow or the spotted uh, tarry, tui. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one, but we'll find out if we play it. Um, I quite like the look at that one actually. So there's, there's benefits to each of these ones. The spotted tarry, I only need one food item. Um, and every time it's activated, I get one seed from supply, which is a good power. But the bird isn't worth any points. It's also a ground, I think that's a ground, is that ground nesting? I forget what that nest uh, is. I'll have to look that one up. Um, which doesn't count towards any bonus points, but you still get points for the eggs on it. Um, we have this one, which the bonus points was for last round, so that's not going to help. It doesn't really matter about the nest in that case. So discard one egg from any of your other birds to gain one food, uh, which could be powerful, but I think uh, that is worth six points as well. <clears throat> um, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for this one. I'll go for this one because I think that's quite a good bird. So we'll gain that. That was my turn. So now we're going to need some food to be able to play that bird. So we're going to go back to the the woodland. And uh, this time, because now we've got the, the two birds out, we can actually gain two food from the supply. So this one will take berries, invertebrates or seeds. Well, I'm going to take an invertebrate. I do get invertebrate already, if I, so I don't necessarily need... Tell you what, let's, let's just change, change my mind. I'll take... I'm going to take the, the seed. I'm go, I don't need a fish. I'll just re-roll them and see what we get. Um, I'll take a berry actually. And then I gain an invertebrate. So I've got three different types of food 
Um, and I only need one to be able to play this bird. I do need eggs. How are we doing on the odd eggs? I've got three eggs. So one of my opponents has uh, a yellow-billed cuckoo. No, was, no, that's me. Oh yes, okay. So what the yellow-billed cuckoo, when another player takes the lay eggs action, this bird lays one egg on a, another bird with a bowl nest. I'm not sure I've got one actually. I don't have a bowl nest. So that power is useless. I need to get a bowl nest bird to make, because that's a really powerful, um, really powerful skill. I need to make use of that. So that's something to look forward to, um, to in a future turn. Um, but for now, I'm going to be playing uh, this one. We'll play the uh, we'll play the invertebrate actually because I don't want to spin my berry. We'll do that. Uh, we need to spend an egg. Uh, sure, we'll just uh, spend that one. Spotted talkie. <clears throat> These birds forage by hopping backwards to uncover insects and seeds in the leaf litter. It's really good. I love this game. It's such a game. It's a really relaxing game as well. Okay, so we're going to need to lay eggs. It's quite important, and I do need more birds. None of them are bowl eggs, so we'll we'll leave that for now. I think. I think the important thing now. Let's just double check here. So we can look at our the score. We can compare ourselves to the opponents. So the red player has two birds in the grassland. I've only got one. Um, and I'm equaling with the yellow player, so I do need more grassland birds. So it's probably more important to pick up a bird from the grassland. Ugh, but there aren't any. Okay, we're going to take a random bird and hopefully we get something good. Oh no, it's a platform wetland bird. It's not going to help us with anything. Okay, well we can't change it. We have to accept what we got given. And I need two fish to play it, but I haven't got any fish. So that didn't help. Oh, we're struggling a bit here. So I could try and get another bird. Um, I'm just going to pick up another bird. Oh, there's another wetland bird. That doesn't help. Ah, uh, doesn't help. So what? Uh, I can't use my, my skill because I still don't have that bowl nest bird. Um, I'll tell you what then. I'm actually going to take some food. So out of these two, which would I want? That's worth six points. That's pretty decent. That's slightly easier to play because it, because it's a gull. Eats anything. Chips. Hmm. That's worth six points. Okay, we're going to take food. I'm going to take a fish because we definitely need it. And I'll take the seed. What I'm going to do, I'm going to discard a card. There's another option we have here. Discard a card to get an extra item of food. I'm going to discard my gull. Um, and I get more food. I'm going to try and get another fish. Which I do. So I can play the bird. Which I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that. But we will find out very soon when I play the bird on my next turn. Okay, one turn left. Doesn't help me with the. Um, it doesn't help me with the uh, the grassland, so I'm not going to get many points in the end of round scoring. But we'll play this. We'll play our two fish. We don't need to pay any eggs. This bird is called the snake bird. It swims with only head and neck above water. Cool. Oh, well, I'd like to see that. That sounds interesting. Um, so I still can't take advantage of that skill. Very frustrating. Okay, so we split the points with um, the uh, the yellow player. So normally, the person in second place would have got two points, but because we both had one bird in the grass and area, we split the points, so we only get a point each, whereas the red player got five points for that one. So we really lost out on that. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. The uh, camera stopped recording for some reason, so um, that's a bit annoying, but we're carrying on. I'm not, I'm not sure whether you missed much. Probably not. Let's carry on. We're starting up now with round three or four, five turns left. Um, I've just picked up this indigo bunting. 
we need total number of birds. So that's what we're trying for, we're trying to play as many birds as possible. So this can be played into the forest or the grassland. Um, I think we've got, well, we've got loads in there. I think we're going to go for the grassland area. Uh, we'll play this, we'll play all three bits of food. And uh, we need to spend an egg, so we'll do that. Indigo bunting. Indigo buntings are almost always found on forest edges. That looks a really pretty bird, actually. Uh, so when activated, we can gain one invertebrate or berry from the bird feeder if there is one. That's a slightly different skill to some of the other ones that we've got. Um, okay, so what do we need? Total number of birds. We could take more birds. We could get food, we could lay eggs. Um, I th think, think we'll grab some food. So I can take two foods, so I can take, I'm going to take the invertebrate and a berry. And I gain one grain because we're activating our tarry. And I get one invertebrate because I'm activating my sap sucker. So I've now got a really quite a powerful engine where every time I take food, I get an extra two bits of food as well. So I can actually build up food quite quickly, which can help me play birds in the future. So I think what we should do now is probably get some more birds. I can only draw one. Uh, how many eggs have I got? I've only got one egg. I could potentially lay some eggs first. I can lay three eggs. And then I could maybe draw more birds. Oh, it's difficult to know what to do. Tell you what, I'm going to lay some eggs because eggs are always worth points. And in the next round, we need birds with bowl nests with eggs in. So we're going to make sure that I lay one on my indigo bunty, which has a, a bowl nest. That's the only one I've got though, unfortunately. Um, I've got two more eggs to lay. Well, we'll just stick them down there. Okay. Um, so we choose from bird feeder. Oh yes, because when we activate this, we can choose um, a berry, which I will do. Uh, we can roll all the dice. There aren't any, so I can't actually uh, take advantage of that power, unfortunately. Two turns left to this one. So now we're going to Oh, that, that, this time at last, I can take advantage of that by laying an egg on our indigo bunting. That's something I haven't been able to do so far, but we're going to pick up some more birds now. Um, so what do we need? We need easy birds that we can just play. Oh, I'll tell you what we will do. Yes, we will definitely take this. I'm going to take this barn swallow. I'll take the barn swallow because it's easy to play for one invertebrate. And also it has this wild nest, so this is a nest that doesn't necessarily fit into any of the other categories. Um, but these count as any types of nest, so it will count as a bowl nest um, in the scoring of the next round. Now I, I could take the painted bunting because it has a bowl nest, but it also needs three items of food. On the other hand, I've got the food for it. Um, so I'm going to actually spend an egg to take a second card. I'm going to take this one. Do I want that one? No, I won't. Uh, yes, I will. Fine, we'll, we'll just do that. And I'm going to take the painted bunting. We'll see if this works out for us. <clears throat> right, total number of birds. We've got one turn left, so we definitely need to, to play one of these cards. So now we get the egg back. Nice little skill. So I could play either of these. Um, so that goes into the grassland, which would cost me one egg. Or I could go here again, it would cost me one egg either way. Or I could get my barn swallow out. Uh, doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. Either one would do. So let's go to the grasslands. Let's play up. Painted bunting, we've got the food for it. We'll get rid of an egg, we'll take that one. Painted bunting. Poachers sell these birds as pets, making it harder for wild populations to thrive. Okay, so we also have the, now a chance to pick up a new bonus point, so it can be quite powerful. Um, we can get birds that have at least one egg laid on them. Now I'm thinking that's probably pretty good actually. So we, oh, but you need seven birds 
with eggs on just to get three points. I've got three at the moment. Well, I'm pretty sure I can get that one. Whereas at the moment, the other ones, cartographer, birds with geography terms and their names, don't have any. So we'll go with, with uh, oologist. Oologist, not sure. Um, I've got an achievement for that as well. Awesome. So we get another egg laid on a bowl. Let's put one on there, which then gives us the extra uh, the extra one of these ones. So we know we have four birds. Yep, so we're getting there. So we need to lay lots of eggs. Oh, we won that one. We had seven total birds. So we get the maximum six points. It's like claws back a few points that we lost out in the previous round. So we've actually won two. We came second in the other one. So we're not doing too badly. <laughs> okay, this is the last turn. So uh, we can get our bowl out as well. Let's do that. Um, so we need birds with bowl nests, basically. So I want to be able to play this barn swallow, uh, which I can actually do. It does cost me two eggs, but that does mean that I'm then covering up the egg space, which means I can actually lay four eggs a turn. So let's go for it. Let's go for it. We'll do that. Um, <clears throat> Do we have anything? We'll take these ones because they're not bowls, so that's not going to affect the bonus points. Barn swallow. Barn swallows once nested in caves, but now favor human-made structures. Which I guess is why it's a wild nest, because it doesn't fit into any of the other types of, of categories. So again, it's game mechanics fitting in with the real life birds, which is fantastic. So we am I going to I'm going to lay some eggs. Um so I'm going to lay one in there, get them on as many different birds as possible. And we've got one more, so we'll stick it on to that one. So that has now got us all the six birds. We need to lay one more egg and we'll get those extra bonus points. Um, tuck a card from hand, can't do that. Choose from bird feeder. I'm going to get my uh, invertebrate. I can roll the dice. I get a mouse. Fantastic. I think we're doing all right. I think we are doing okay here. We're getting some decent points. <clears throat> okay, so I think what we do is just keep on laying eggs. I really think we just keep on laying eggs. So we get four points for this. Let's make sure that all birds I've got eggs on them, so we'll do that. Um, so all birds have at least one egg on them, so yeah, that doesn't really matter where else we lay them. Let's uh, stick them on there. So I'll tuck a card from hand, I can't do that because I've got nothing to tuck. Choose from bird feeder, let's roll the dice. Uh, I'll get take the invertebrae, roll that dice again, don't get a mouse. But we've still got a couple of extra points there. <clears throat> Two turns left. Uh, I can lay another egg. Let's lay that one on the bowl nest. So what can we do? We've got 13 eggs. Um, two turns left. How much can we can we get one more bird out? It would take two turns, so I need to draw a bird and then play a bird, or I could just spend the last two turns laying eggs. I think one of the, 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 the main criticisms of this game is that the last few rounds you generally spend just laying eggs and everybody does it because that's the easiest way of earning points, especially at this point. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. I don't think it's worth getting any more birds out. Because, okay, for example, say say I picked up one of these birds, um, the, uh, the, the Berwick's Wren. It's worth four points, but I can. But it takes two turns. It will take these last two turns. I have to pick it up and next turn play it. Gets me four points. Whereas alternatively, I could lay four eggs this turn. That gives me four points. Four eggs next turn. That gives me eight points. So that's that's worth more than that bird. So I'm just going to spend these last turns laying eggs like that. Can't do that. I'll pick up the invertebrate. Roll the dice. I get another point for the for the mouse. Perfect. <clears throat> um, do I have a bowl nest? Ah, I made a mistake by filling up my bowl nest where I could have 
Never mind, it's fine. We're going to lay four more eggs. They're all full. One, two, three, four. Done. Can't do that. Can't do that. No mice. Okay, so I think that's going to take us to the end of the game. Uh, with 21 eggs, I think I did pretty well. There we go. So I win that one. I get the seven points maximum. So now final game scoring. How did we do? So this is how much we score for the points on the face of the birds, the little feather icons. Oh, I didn't win that one. Didn't get a huge amount of bonus points. End of round goals, that's where I get my points. And eggs, this is where I should get a good lot of points here as well. Food points, I get a little bit of that. Tucked cards, got a few. We win with 80 points. I've done better, but it's still a win. So there we go, that is Wingspan. Um, I absolutely love this game. It's fantastic. It's, it's um, on sale now on, on Steam. I think it's about what is it, about 15 quid-ish, I think, I spent on this. Um, and you can also get the physical copy of the game as well, which I highly recommend. If you're into board games, if you're into computer games, definitely worth it. And if you're into birds, I think you'd really enjoy this. Uh, so let me know what you think down in the comment section. I do hope you've enjoyed this. And if you want to see more of this kind of things, there are several other uh, computer games or board games. I was thinking about doing a showcase of the actual board game. I've got several other scientific-themed uh, conservation, uh, wildlife, nature, evolution-type um, board games uh, which I could do a showcase of if that sort of thing you're interested. If you are, if you've got this far into the video, uh, you must have found something interesting about it. So let me know down in the comment section and make sure you subscribe and hit the like because that really helps out the channel. And I really hope I will see you in the next video. And I'll see you then. Goodbye.